Now, Jeffrey Epstein was a millionaire financier. The mystery of Jeffrey Epstein's wealth has never been, been clarified. Jeffrey Epstein, a Manhattan billionaire, arrested yesterday on federal sex trafficking charges. I believe he took his own life. How did a math teacher with no college degree become one of the world's richest and most notorious men? This is the story of Jeffrey Epstein, the man who used his wealth to buy influence, silence, and sex. But how exactly did he make his fortune? Let's find out. Jeffrey Epstein was born in January 1953 in a rented apartment on Maple Avenue in New York City's Coney Island. He was the grandson of Jewish immigrants and was a whiz at math, and even graduated from high school ahead of schedule. After that, he joined the Cooper Union and New York University for a bit, according to reports from various news sources, including some court documents. Then he started his professional life in the mid-1970s by teaching at the Dalton School, even though he hadn't finished college. But after getting dismissed from school in 1976, he jumped into the world of banking and finance, landing various roles at big firms before venturing out to start his own firm. He ended up managing money for super rich people, collecting a fortune in the hundreds of millions of dollars. His influence grew so big that he even snagged the position of money manager on Wall Street. His net worth? Well, documents revealed he was worth about $560 million. When Epstein hit his early 40s, he had one of the biggest private homes in Manhattan, a seven-story, 21,000-square-foot stone mansion with heated sidewalks, which was worth over $50 million. If that wasn't enough, he also owned a swanky mansion in sunny Palm Beach, valued at about $12 million, a massive 100,000-acre ranch in New Mexico, clocking in at over $17 million, and an apartment in Paris worth $8.6 million plus his private jet and a home in Florida. But the real deal? He had not one but two private Caribbean islands, Great St. James and Little St. James, together valued at $86 million. In 1998, Epstein snagged the 75-acre island Little St. James for $7.95 million. And in 2016, he decided to double down and splurge over $20 million on the 165-acre Great St. James. However, these were snapped up for $60 million by billionaire Steven Dekoff in 2023. Well, who would have thought a college dropout who was born into a working class family would gain this much success in no time? But how? While trying his luck at teaching math at the Dalton School, he started tutoring the son of the CEO of Bear Stearns, Alan Greenberg, which later turned into his job as a finance guy in Bear Stearns. This connection ended up landing him a gig at the investment bank. Plus, he also started moving into elite circles, including Bill Clinton, Bill Gates, Donald Trump, and even people from the royal family. Epstein then started his firm, J. Epstein & Company, where he only took on super rich clients, people with at least $1 billion. He started handling money for mega rich people like Les Wexner of L Brands and Leon Black of Apollo Global Management. By that time, Epstein was raking in hundreds of millions of dollars. Apart from that, J.P. Morgan Chase was also throwing serious cash at Epstein, loaning him money and letting him withdraw massive piles of cash over a span of 15 years. So, in his all-time career, he made $634 million. But things took a turn when Epstein got caught up in some serious trouble. It all started with a phone call to the Palm Beach Police Department back in March 2005. It was the stepmom of a 14-year-old girl from high school who said that Epstein had done something terrible to the teen. All this came out when another girl's mom overheard that 14-year-old girl talking about how she had met with this older guy, had relations with him, and got paid for it, which the other mother told the stepmom of that teen. Yup. He got busted for doing shady stuff with underage girls. In just three years after that call, Epstein was looking at a 53-page federal indictment on serious charges that could have put him away for life, all put together by the FBI, but he only ended up serving 13 months of an 18-month sentence in county jail. How? Well, he got his hands on this plea deal that a lot of people thought was a load of nonsense. It's called a non-prosecution agreement, and it was with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Miami at the time. The man in charge, Alexander Acosta, who used to be Trump's labor secretary, put this deal together. 
This deal let Epstein admit to a couple of state charges and dodge federal ones for a whole bunch of similar stuff. On top of that, it gave him and anyone else involved a pass on facing more federal charges down in Southern Florida. Because of Epstein's mess, Black, who paid Epstein $158 million for tax and estate planning, had to step down as chairman and CEO of his company. He even forked over $62.5 million to the US Virgin Islands to clear his name from any Epstein-related mess. Wexner wasn't off the hook either. He had Epstein by his side for more than a decade, managing his billions and giving him business advice. When the heat turned up, L Brands Wexner's company was quick to condemn Epstein's unsavory actions, pledging to support those who'd been hurt. Wexner himself expressed deep regret for ever getting involved with Epstein. He made it clear that he had no clue about any of the illegal stuff that Epstein got tangled up in. Everyone has to feel uh, enormous regret uh, for the advantage uh, that was taken of, uh, of so many young women. And uh, that's just unexplainable, abhorrent behavior and uh, clearly uh, is something we, we, we all uh, would condemn. Moreover, the biggest bank in the US ended up settling a lawsuit over this shady business. They even shelled out money to nearly 200 women who've been affected by this whole mess. In a statement to CBS Money Watch, JP Morgan bashed Epstein's actions, calling them monstrous and throwing serious shade at their past dealings with him. And as if that wasn't enough, even Deutsche Bank got itself caught up in this whole ordeal. They ended up agreeing to cough up $75 million to settle a lawsuit, accusing them of reaping the benefits from Epstein's sex trafficking and making a pretty penny doing business with him. In 2020, Deutsche Bank admitted to its mistake in taking Epstein on board and owning up to the flaws in its process. Anyhow, fast forward to August 10th, 2019, and Jeffrey Epstein was found dead in his jail cell in New York City. After some urgent efforts by the guards to bring him back, they rushed him to the New York downtown hospital. But sadly, he was pronounced dead at 6.39 a.m. The official word from the NYC medical examiner and the Justice Department Inspector General was that Epstein took his own life by hanging, but his lawyers didn't buy it and hired their own detective. The Attorney General, William Barr, said Epstein's passing came from a perfect storm of screw-ups after he had some doubts about what really happened. The FBI and the Department of Justice's Inspector General got in on the action, digging into how this all went down, and the guards who were supposed to be keeping an eye on things ended up facing charges for messing with records. And when Epstein died, all the charges against him were dismissed and the focus turned to his supposed partners in crime. One of them, Ghislaine Maxwell, was cuffed in July 2020 and convicted on December 29, 2021. Another guy tied to Epstein, Jean-Luc Brunel, got himself into trouble with the law in France and sadly took his own life later on. With all the strange happenings surrounding Epstein's demise that night and his bluff about having dirt on powerful people, it's no surprise that people's minds went into overdrive with wild theories. Some people think he didn't kill himself but got taken out, while others reckon he faked the whole thing. It even sparked an Epstein didn't kill himself meme. Polls showed that only a small number of Americans thought Epstein pulled the plug on himself, with many more suspecting foul play or just not knowing what to think. What's your take on the twists and turns of Jeffrey Epstein's story? Drop them down below in the comments. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.